So chemotherapy has been around for a long time. Uh, chemotherapy has in evolved into chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, chemoimmunotherapy is a very, very highly effective way at managing the disease, has been. Doesn't work as well for patients who have a 17P deletion, but is very effective in patients who don't have a 17P deletion. It's effective at getting deep remissions and um, is, a, is effective in, in is, in, is effective in terms of getting these deep remissions and giving patients the opportunity to have a treatment-free uh, period. And as I mentioned, the group of patients who it's most effective for and were most enthusiastic still about it is patients who are younger and fit and who have a mutated immunoglobulin heavy chain variable gene because those are the patients we think may be cured with uh, chemo, chemoimmunotherapy-based treatment. So there's been a revolution of treatment uh, in patients with CLL, a, a revolution of options, and management of uh, CLL has really changed uh, over the recent years. Um, previously, our main option was chemo, chemoimmunotherapy, and we would manage patients with repeated, um, repeated cycles and treatment courses with uh, various options of chemoimmunotherapy, usually in an escalating fashion. So we might start with something that's lower intensity and work our way up as patients developed resistance. Um, however, in recent years, in the last five or so years, we've had these small molecule inhibitors developed and clearly they have changed how we manage patients with CLL. They've also fundamentally changed the outcomes for patients with CLL where survival is much, much improved with the new small molecule inhibitors. Uh, there are some challenges with them, so they do have some toxicities, um, and they do have some limitations. So one limitation I mentioned was that patients, although they're very effective at controlling the disease, patients generally are committed to treatment when they go on them. We don't usually uh, stop them. but. They, are, um, they have made fundamental advances in management for patients uh, with CLL by virtue of how well they control the disease and uh, prevent progression of the disease and extend um, patient survival. Our n most recent work and what I'm most excited about right now is f combining these agents. So for example, combining a BTK uh, inhibitor with a BCL2 inhibitor like venetoclax uh, we've done a clinical trial with ibrutinib plus venetoclax and are able to achieve a very, very high complete remission rate and a very high MRD negative rate. So where we weren't previously having discussions about getting patients off treatment, we're now able to have discussions about these deep remissions that can be achieved in a reasonable amount of time and discontinuation of treatment uh, and a period of observation uh, and remission. So it's not only the small molecule inhibitor combinations that we're very excited about. There are new treatment modalities that are currently being developed, one of which is the CAR T-cell therapy. Uh, we're very excited about the prospect of that strategy in terms of achieving remissions and potentially curing patients. I think there's a lot of work still to do with the CAR T-cells um, because of the toxicity profile with that uh, modality. Um, but there is definitely, there are definitely a number of other strategies that are in development and that we're working with in clinical trials that are uh, equally exciting and I think will potentially represent additional advances in treatment. And I'm very optimistic that in the next three to five years we'll be able to cure many patients with CLL.